Greetings, my fellow electric monkey brains. Today, we're gonna to look at transformer core types. Now, from all the core types, they usually come in three main materials. The first type of material is a steel or iron core transformer. And the second type of material is called a uh, metal alloy powder or alloy powder core. This is made from uh, some type of alloy or conductive particle being mixed with non-conductive particles and then compressed together in these type of uh, toroid shapes. The third type of material you'll come across is a pure ferrite. Ferrite is a crystalline material and it's non-conductive. By far, the ferrite has the highest value of permeability. Permeability is, the, is a measure of the ability of a material to concentrate and keep the magnetic field inside it. And out of all of these types, the steel or iron core has the lowest type of permeability. Now, if you look at this uh, steel core, you'll see it's actually made from uh, thin metal strips. Now, this is to cut down on something called eddy current losses. Eddy currents or currents uh, are produced because the magnetic field of the transformer is, of course, changing in time, and that creates induction in the, in the metal, and uh, the direction of those eddy currents are in a direction such that they produce a flux which is in opposition to the flux which you're trying to create and in general they create a lot of loss in the material and in order to cut down on those losses and therefore heat uh, the iron core uh, is uh, divided into these laminations or just thin metal strips are actually separated by uh, some type of non-conductive material like glue or dielectric or something like this here in this toroid shape, you can see that the laminations actually go around in a circle. For the metal iron powder alloy core, they uh, reduce their eddy currents simply by the virtue of the fact that the uh, conducting particles are separated by some non-conducting particles when it's all compressed together, and therefore they reduce the eddy currents that way. Uh, the ferrite doesn't suffer from eddy currents because it's actually a non-conducting material. However, the ferrite suffers from something called hysteresis. Hysteresis is the nonlinear response of a material. A nonlinear response means that if we were to put a coil around this core and produce a flux, magnetic flux inside, and then later we want to remove that magnetic flux and get a current, uh, we wouldn't get as much current out as we put in. That's because it has a nonlinear uh, response in terms of its hysteresis. But most ferrite cores operate within a region which is outside of the hysteresis loop that they have and it means in general that the ferrite cores have very very high efficiency which makes them attractive solutions for anything basically. Now if you look at these uh, iron cores and steel cores because they have eddy current losses the eddy current losses actually increase with frequency that means if you to go to a higher frequency, these cores will just become less and less efficient. And because of that, these steel and iron cores are usually on, uh, only used at, uh, for 50 hertz applications. However, because the ferrite core doesn't suffer from eddy current losses, it can operate at much higher frequencies. Uh, and that makes it attractive for uh, the application of pulse transformers. That means uh, the current passing through these type of transformers will be in the form of a pulse, like a square wave or a triangle wave or simply a spike of current. And those types of shapes of current will actually contain a whole spectrum of different frequencies. So the ferrite core needs to have a low loss uh, for all a whole spectrum of frequencies which it can then achieve. Now, because the ferrite core can operate at a high frequency, it means that we can it can have a much greater power density uh, than the steel laminated core can. Now, for example, the way to think about this would be that uh, if this core is operating at 50 hertz, and uh, for example, just pretend that we could put through it 10 watts, uh, and because it's at 50 hertz, we do that 50 times a second, but in this transformer, we put through 10 watts, but we could do that a 100,000 times a second, then you can see that this type of transformer is gonna be able to pass through itself much greater amount of power than the steel transformer. Now, because of that, it means that uh, this type of transformer can be, uh, um, its size can be greatly reduced compared to the steel transformers. 
In other words, it's good for miniaturization. And just to put it into context, I think that this type of transformer, which came from a, a UPS system, this can is good for, I don't know, 200 to maybe six or 700 watts. Whereas this type of transformer can easily operate over a thousand watts. And that's just to put it into context for you. So those are the three different type of materials you'll commonly come across. And now we're going to look at the uh, transformer types, like the shape and what they're used for. And in particular, we're going to look at the pulse or high frequency transformers. Okay, so here I have a set of different examples of core types, which you may find in high frequency transformers or inductors. And of course, those type of transformers or inductors are usually in uh, DC to DC converters. Everything on the left here is made of ferrite and these here on the right are the metal iron powder cores. Usually they come in uh, toroid shapes and they always have these different colors. There is a color code to these, but it depends on the manufacturer. So you have to check the manufacturer's data sheet. Usually you find these only with a single winding, um, which means they're good for uh, DC, to, DC to converters like the boost converter or the book converter. And uh, you'll find many of these on, for example, the motherboard of your computer, like which is where this tiny one came from. And those are used to produce the 3.3 uh, volts, which your processor uses, or the 5 volts, which other components use. And they, they create that type of voltage from the 12 volts, which uh, your power supply uh, produces. Usually these uh, core types are just with a single winding, and that's because they have a slightly lower permeability than ferrite. So it doesn't really matter so much if you just have a, a single winding. But if you want two windings, a primary and a secondary, then you, you, it's better off, a better choice would be the ferrite because the higher permeability of the ferrite allows more of the flux produced by the primary to go into the secondary and therefore you get a higher efficiency. Most of the time these ferrite cores will come in the shape of an E core. This is an E core because half of it is shaped like an E. And this is called a C core because half, one half is uh, shaped like a, a C. Now with the E core here, you'll see that they have these side pieces and these side pieces are there to capture the magnetic flux which comes out of the center and to redirect it back into the center again. Uh, from this type of core, you can see here that the uh, top and the side and the center are roughly the same size. But from this type of core, you can see that the side actually um, increases, it sort of splays out and makes a bigger a uh, bigger uh, area there and that's simply because it wants to concentrate more of the magnetic field there and it also acts like a shield for example this is an e-core like this that which has already been wound this comes from a power supply from a computer it has many different windings on there to produce all of the different voltages for your computer power supply but you can see that this entire side of this transformer is completely open that means that if i was to have a little capacitor on the board sit here sitting right next to it that capacitor would receive induction from these windings. Now, if the current in those windings was, is high enough and the capacitor was small enough, they could blow up the capacitor. So in order to uh, stop that, engineers will usually put a piece of copper all the way around the uh, transformer on the outside, and that would act like a shield. Of course, that's the cheap option. A more expensive option would be to create a ferrite core, which is totally enclosed for example, this type of pot core here, the winding would go in the inside and then you would put the two pieces of uh, pot core together and it makes a completely in, uh, enclosed ferrite there, which will protect, keep the magnetic field inside and protect everything else on the outside. If you look at this uh, E core here, you can see that um, it has a tiny gap in the middle there. You see, and that, that gap has been uh, placed there by the engineer. Usually when you buy them from the manufacturer, they'll come with no gap, and then you have to put a gap yourself. The reason they put a gap there is because ferrites usually have a high permeability. That means that's good because they capture a lot of magnetic field, but it's also bad because it means that uh, the flux inside them will reach a very, very high limit, or I mean a, a high value, and reach the limit quicker than, for example, the metal iron powder. And because it reaches the limit in flux that it can handle, it will enter saturation earlier. Now, in order to uh, prevent that, the engineers put a little gap in here, and that allows that reduces the inductance, and it allows this transformer to handle more flux. So that is why you'll see a little gap in there. Now, uh, 
Turning to these type of C cores here, this came from a uh, flyback transformer. This is a flyback transformer. It's a high voltage transformer. It came from one of the old type TVs and it produces high voltage, uh, which is used to deflect the electron beam in the cathode ray tube of the old televisions. And these type of C cores are often uh, used for high voltage because of the um, winding window here, which is the gap where all the windings would be. Uh, because you have a relatively large winding window, it allows a good space between the primary and secondary windings, which is important for high voltage applications because of the isolation which is needed, obviously. And lastly, this piece of, uh, this is a ferrite rod, and usually these are used in uh, radio receivers. And they would use to be used to wind a winding on here to create a specific inductance, and that would be connected to a capacitor, which is usually a variable capacitor. And then by changing the capacitance, you could change the resonant frequency, the whole thing, and tune into different radio stations like that. Here you can just have a single uh, line, meaning it's open, it's not enclosed like the E core or the C core because uh, they don't really care uh, about the magnetic field on the outside because this is low power, uh, it's low energy. And it's long because you want to put all of the windings on the whole length. You don't want to put the windings just here and then sort of wrap them on top of each other with different layers because if you have uh, more layers, then that means you have a greater interturn capacitance in the windings and you, or you want all of your capacitance for this, this radio application. You want all of your capacitance to be in the actual capacitor, which you can tune. So that's what that's used for. So now we're gonna look at some uh, core types which are used for chokes and filters. Okay, so I've gathered together here several types of um, core which can be used as uh, chokes and filters. If you don't know what a choke or filter is, basically most of the time it uh, is an inductor and inductors, an inductor is just a coil of wire wrapped around a core like this or this. And inductors have an impedance which increases with a frequency. That means they will block uh, high frequency components, but they will allow through low frequency components. And that's important because our mains power supply is usually 50 or 60 hertz, which is low frequency. But most of your components are DC to DC converters, which generate high frequency components. And in order to stop those high frequency components of electricity, getting back into the mains uh, power supply, we need uh, filters and that usually takes the, uh, uh, the form of inductors. So this large ring here is actually made from ferrite and this would be used to literally wrap around the mains uh, wire around itself. So this, uh, and, and, and therefore form an inductor and therefore filter or choke. It would go between the, the actual plug and the actual device that's why it's so large. A smaller version of that is here. It's a ferrite ring and you, usually you would find that inside a device itself acting as a choke or a filter. Well, sometimes the inductors are simply used as an inductor. Sometimes you just need an inductor, like for example in audio applications and here's uh, something like that. It's a ferrite rod in the middle with several turns wrapped around it encased by this uh, black uh, heat shrink here. And it says on the front, uh, two amps and 800 micro Henry. So you know what you're gonna do with that. And uh, here are some more examples of simple inductors. They have ferrite on side them. And you know, this sits horizontally on the board and this one sits vertically on the board. And these two have little hats on the top and that's just to redirect the magnetic field inside itself. And here is a metal iron powder core and this can, with windings around, and this is actually encased in a black resin. The black resin is just to help it sit nicely on the board and not uh, fall around everywhere. This can be used as an inductor or a power component or anything, basically. Here's an example of an actual tunable inductor. Uh, there's a fair piece of ferrite inside here, and by turning this little screw here on the top, you can move the uh, ferrite up and down, thereby changing the inductance of this uh, winding here. So that's an example of a um, tunable inductor. These things on the right side over here are called common mode filters. And um, the top two are high power applications and they're made from the metal iron powder cores. And the lower three are for low power applications and they're made from um, ferrites. 
Now usually uh, these common mode filters always have two windings on them and the one winding, the two windings are opposing each other meaning the fluxes which they create are opposing. One winding sits in the, uh, in the positive uh, power supply winding uh, wire and the other winding sits in the negative power supply side. And um, because these windings are opposing each other uh, currents which are passing through the positive or negative side will simply not see any impedance due to this but if you have a voltage which is present on the a voltage spike or high, fre high frequency component which is, uh, which is present on the both the positive and negative line simultaneously then that will see a high impedance created by this common mode choke and usually that's a high frequency noise which is created from outside of the, the device, like for example a nearby radio transmitter or something like that. And it's to filter that noise from entering back into the mains line, so you'll often see these directly inside a compo uh, device next to where the mains power supply comes in. These devices are much smaller, so they're less power and they have much thinner winding, but they have ferrite around them. Uh, you can get away with a ferrite in this case because the windings oppose each other which means the magnetic field squirts out and there's no chance of entering uh, saturation with these things. So that's what these are for. These are common mode filters. Uh, these are inductors and this is also uh, used as an inductor or a, a filter. Uh, this type strange thing here is um, two halves of uh, this type of uh, core here. And this actually comes from a uh, old CRT TV and um, the electron beam which creates the picture on an old CRT TV would actually pass through the center of this like this and the coil windings around here would um, because of its funny shape would produce a magnetic field which sort of splays out and then as the electrons come out they would be bent by the magnetic field and they would fly off in different directions depending on the current in the windings on this and uh, they would produce the picture on the old TV screen so that's what these are these are for. Two types of uh, core which I forgot to mention are actually uh, chokes or filter type of cores and the first one is called a ferrite bead obviously it's made out of ferrite it's very very small and it's designed to fit around one leg of a power MOSFET or a, a power, some type of power switch and it's there to dissipate very very high frequency but not so high amplitude voltage spikes that are caused for example when you close the switch and you get uh, they're caused by flyback voltage when you close the switch on a transformer. The other type of uh, choke is uh, this type of core which usually comes in two halves and a plastic case and can be clipped or fits around the mains wire and that's designed to create a high impedance for high frequency signals and stop them traveling back into the mains uh, circuit. Okay, so now we're going to just take a look at briefly at the, uh, the good old low frequency transformers. Okay, so here I've collected three different types of, uh, actually two different types of core uh, for the 50 hertz uh, steel low frequency transformers. This is an E type of core, which means that it has a central core there and the windings are wrapped around it. And these two are the toroid type where the windings would, would go like this. Uh, here's an example of one which has already been wound and it has a sort of a shielding around it like this. The E-core is going to be more efficient because it, uh, it's going to capture more of the magnetic field but the uh, toroid shape is going to give you more flexibility in terms of the winding window so you'd be able to put much more windings on here, different uh, windings of different voltages etc and you wouldn't block up the whole thing now in general you would never use a steel transformer or steel core like this for a DC to DC converter or a choke or a filter. Uh, for a choke or a filter you, it's just way too big and you would, its permeability is too low. You would need way too many turns on here to make it into a choke or a filter. And uh, as to, in terms of a DC to DC converter it would never work because it's too lossy at high frequencies. However, they are still useful and that is for applications where you'd need low noise. That means that uh, these type of transformers, because they only work at low frequency and only one frequency, 50 Hertz, they're good for power supplies where you need low noise. For example, an audio amplifier. An audio amplifier would need power to come in 
um, in the form of DC, uh, which would be at the very low uh, noise levels, uh, because otherwise uh, uh, noise would be amplified and then your uh, stereo wouldn't sound as good, for example. Uh, another example would uh, where you need low noise applications might be um, uh, sensitive uh, electrical detect detecting equipment like oscilloscopes or network analyzers or maybe even function generators and things like that. So these things still have applications, they're just not used for power applications and you would never, for example, find one of these inside your mobile phone. So, uh, yeah, that's all there is to say about these, I think. If you uh, know of any core types, which I haven't mentioned, please let me know in the comments because I always want to learn new things. Uh, if you like the video and you'd like to support the channel, you can do so using the links below. That's it. Thanks a lot. See you later.